For this lesson, we are going to practice drawing up from an ampule and then injecting into a 100 ml sodium chloride mini bag. So as you can see, filter needles look a different than my regular blunt needle. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach my filter needle to my syringe as this will prevent any possible paper contamination. Next, I'm going to swab my ampule neck. So there are a couple of ways to break an ampule. One way is just like this, and you're going to snap it towards, always snap towards the side of your hood. This way it prevents any glass pieces from getting into your HEPA filter. Most ampules have either a line or a dot to indicate the weakest point of the ampule, to, so that's where you want to break it. You're just going to grab the ampule, ampule and just snap. Now, if you're worried about cutting yourself, another way to do that is, and you always want to make sure there's no more fluid up there, so you can flick it if there is any. You take an alcohol swab. First, again, you're going to disinfect your ampule let it dry. Then you're going to take another alcohol swab. Carefully open it, wrap it around the neck of your ampule, and again snapping towards the side of your hood, and always discard in the sharps container. So now I'm going to draw up two mils into my syringe. Put my needle cap in my needle cap holder. This time with the bevel down, I'm going to put it in my ampule and just draw up. Side of my work surface. With ampules, you don't have to worry about adding an air or the milking technique. It's also important to remember so when using filter needles, they are one way. This means that if I've used it to draw up from my ampule, I can't use it to push air or fluid out of it. So to remove the air and to check my volume, I'm going to remove my filter needle and attach a regular needle to my syringe. to bring all the bubbles up to the surface and draw in a bit of air and just push up. So in this case, I wanted two mils, but as you can see, I drew up over four. So I want to remove the extra volume of fluid. So I'm going to remove my needle cap. I'm going to place my needle back in to the ampule, and I'm going to carefully push the extra fluid back into my ampule. You can see we're at two mils now. 
Now before I inject into my sodium chloride 0.9% 50 ml bag, I'm gonna take another new needle. And the reason for this is when I was injecting the fluid back into the ampule, there's potential that there was glass and stuff that got on my needle and we do not want that to end up in our final compounded sterile product. Catch my new needle. Now I'm gonna swab a port of my mini bag. And I always have my port slightly above the work surface in any other area so that the first air is always hitting my critical site. I'm going to let that dry. Now that it's dry, I'm going to remove my needle off my, my needle cap off my blunt needle. Lift my critical site, which is the port, into the air. And just push in. I'm going to re swab my port to maintain sterility. Again, always discard your sharps in your sharps container. I'm going to check to make sure that there's no leaks. And gently mix as well as look to see if there's any particulate. It is good to note that um, one way to see if there's particulate in your bag is that bubbles will float up, whereas any particulate will sink. 